Y'all want to do some Peterson um, before we roll, and then I'll come back and do some questions for the last two minutes. Because this, this, these Peterson things are pretty fun. Um, just give me one second, I'll set this video up. I have two Peterson videos just because every time in TMBS fashion, every time we get a new Jordan Peterson crying video, uh, I think we're sort of contractually obligated to play it. Um, so let's play this one first, and then we can go to, uh, and thanks Kowalski for the chat there too. Um, and then we can go uh, to the second bit about God. Oh, shit, I should put my headphones in for this. And you think, well, I, you know, we're going to destroy the planet. We have to do this. We have to demoralize the youth to be ethical. It's like, yeah, really, that's your f theory. You're going to demoralize young people to be ethical. That's your theory. It's like, you should go home and think about that for, like, a year. And I'm passionate about this, you know, because... You have no idea how many people that's killing. You have no idea. I see people everywhere, all over the world, <laughs> they're so demoralized. Especially young people, especially young people with a conscience, because they've been told since they were little that there's nothing to them but corruption and power. It's like, how the hell do you expect them to react? You know, they... Well, I shouldn't do anything, man, you know? I get worried sometimes, because he is, he is not well. <laughs> um, the, uh, the king of masculinity there. Um, <laughs> where to start? I mean, I will say, if you watch that entire, that's from an interview he did with the Hoover Institute um, called The Importance of Being Ethical with Jordan Peterson. And I will say, and not to disappoint, because we're going we're gonna to come at uh, Peterson in a second. You know, what he's responding there to is actually something I don't agree with Peterson because what he the way he frames these things is always, I think, very duplicitous. But he's actually talking about um, a professor that he knows, allegedly, um, who built a very nice greenhouse and has only had one child and is sort of lecturing and hectoring his students about consuming less um, and, and living a certain kind of lifestyle, a lifestyle that is only available to a kind of super rich people who can decouple. Um, from these kind of systems so that they feel more ethically pure. That is the kind of green movement um, politics that I've always found to be complete trash, right? That one, the individualist notion of these things. Um, and two, uh, you know, this kind of personal morality that plays into it. So I agree with Peterson, actually, um, that that's not a great way to motivate people. But Peterson is not making the argument that I'm making, uh, that we should be taking a social and collective struggle, right, which is climate change, and dealing with on a social collective level um, instead of this kind of individual bourgeois trash politics that we see from so many liberals that has gotten us nowhere other than maybe a kind of booming uh, green industry to sort of placate the, the, the guilt and, and fears of the wealthy. Um, but Peterson isn't making that argument. Peterson here is making the argument that talking about the reality of warming planet, talking about the reality of failing systems, you know, they're talking about here, um, we're getting all the warnings in Texas. It's going to hit hundred this weekend. Um, you know, turn down your AC, uh, don't consume because the grid can't handle it. Despite the fact, you know, that we had people die, uh, during the winter storm, uh, you know, a couple years back, um, They've done very, very little to make sure that this grid works, right? Um, we're already facing the reality of a warming planet. Um, more and more extreme switches and turns um, in, in, in the environment and in, uh, you know, in weather uh, that cause systems to fail. Um, fail not only because they're not updated, but failed in Texas in particular because there's such a nasty profit motive within that system that doesn't create a very rational or effective uh, way of providing power for people. Peterson is not making that argument. Peterson is saying that young people are shutting down, right? And he holds his, himself very closely as he says this. Um, the young people are shutting down because there's too much negativity out there. And they're, they're being made to feel bad, um, which is, you know, the most ludicrous way. And, and I think one of the, the sillier ways to address something that is a real problem that he's reacting to. And that's the real Peterson trick. Um, I must say, I know on this side and most people watching this, none of us are big Peterson fans, but it is worthwhile to know why is Peterson popular? Because he speaks to real feelings um, and anxieties that people have, that the world's not working, 
that it's scary and that they are being personally targeted for things, right? Because so much of American liberalism is this kind of scolding mentality and it's not good. Um, but instead of saying, okay, well, we need to change that kind of personal individualist mentality that so dominates uh, those politics into something that is collective and hopeful and actually aims to build a better future for people. Peterson wants to shut it down, put your head, your head in the sand. Um, and, uh, and, and completely decouple yourself um, from public life. I mean, that's his argument, right? He says, don't, you can't criticize anyone else until you have your own house in order, which is the most cowardly way to interact and walk around the world, right? That until you become the perfect human being, right? It's an unattainable standard. Until you become the perfect human being, don't you ever talk about systems. Don't you ever talk about the society that, you, that you're living in. It's anti-democratic. It's cowardly. Um, and it's a weak minded uh, morality that Peterson is pushing forward. Extremely nasty. But he speaks ethically in ethical moral language that is attractive to folks. And we should, um, you know, take that um, with a grain of salt for sure, because it's performance. Right. But it's performance that has been effective um, to some extent. And we should never be outflanked by a kind of raving lunatic um, who can point to things that might make some people uncomfortable. Um, and then mix that obviously with a lot of horrible social conservatism, personal conservatism, patriarchal thinking, all that kind of stuff. Um, we should just be able to dominate somebody like that. And I think that there is a problem um, on the left of being able to talk um, in these kind of grand uh, ways to being able to talk on that kind of ethical personal dimension that was really motivating and healing and powerful for folks um, because he only exists in our lack, if you get what I mean. Um, and he's also very funny uh, when he breaks down and cries like this. But I wanted to see, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the God stuff because I think this is um, Peterson at some of his most sinister and, and cynical is the way that he sort of puts forward, uh, you know, the God equation for people. You know, cards on the table, I'm not a believer, um, but I recognize where these things sort of play a role in people's lives. And the way that he comes up, uh, his justification of God and the God itself that he wants to convince people to believe in, um, I, I think is, uh, you know, a very unfortunate and dangerous one. But let's let, uh, you know, Dr. Peterson blow your mind uh, with some uh, facts and logic here. And all good things share some good in common. Well, what is the good that they share in common? Well, for all intents and purposes, that's God. And you might say, well, I don't believe in that. It's like, well, I don't know what you mean. You don't believe there's any such thing as good? You don't believe there's any such thing as ultimate good? I'm not trying to make some ontological claim about an old man living in the sky, although I think that's a lot more sophisticated concept than people generally realize. That's not my point. My point is you do have a belief system, whether you know it or not. It's a system of ethics, whether you know it or not. There's either something at the bottom that unifies it, or it's not unified which means you're aimless and hopeless and depressed and anxious and confused because those are the only other options and maybe you don't know what that unifying belief is but that doesn't mean that it's not there it just means you don't know what it is okay <laughs> um i mean sorry y'all this is just like intro to philosophy arguments for god i mean this is the kind of thing i don't know if y'all seen that movie god's not dead the kind of uh, conflation of, for example, God with the good, um, which people have been making for a long time. And I'm not trying to step on anybody's uh, beliefs here, but I want to talk about specifically what he's arguing for here, why it's wrong, and also why it's appealing for folks. So let's start at the end, right? He identifies experiences that so many people feel in, um, you know, our society today, anxiety, loneliness, alienation. Right. Um, but why do we feel those things, according to Peterson? It's not because the social and the communal has been completely eradicated under, you know, it was challenged first under under early like primitive accumulation, the early growth of capitalism. And it was cemented um, after decades and decades upon neoliberalism. I mean, read, you know, history about how, for example, social movements were, were started and where they sort of originated from in the 1800s and the early uh, 20th century and read about the rich social lives 
despite the fact that people were working so much, despite the fact that people were facing so much, um, people had community, people had organizations that they were part of. And what we've seen through neoliberalism is the true victory, uh, the true victory of Margaret Thatcher's argument that there is no society, there are only individuals and their families. These are things, these are institutions, right, that Peterson um, makes, you know, holds the most dear, right? Individualism and the family as the social unit, uh, the beginning and the end of the social unit. Those, the primacy of those two things at the expense of social organization, community organization, and I'm not just talking about political stuff, I'm talking about socializing uh, with people in, in your community. Those things have been under threat uh, through this system. People are alienated. People do feel alone, um, and it's because of the you know the alienation that you have at work, right? Where you're working, you're creating something under uh, conditions decided not by you, but by a floating authority figure, your boss, capitalism, the corporation in general. And then you return home um, to these kind of asocial. Um, anti-communal organizations that have only propped up as societies become more and more alienated. I mean, American society, the growth of, of the suburbs have been played a huge role in this. Um, so yeah, people do feel alienated, but it's not because they don't have God. It's because the actual material social conditions that have come into power because of the kind of conservatism um, and pro-capitalist mentality that Jordan Peterson puts up have dominated for so long. They have deconstructed uh, the social to such an extreme extent. I mean, think about this. Where could you go right now and socialize and spend time with people um, without having to spend money where it's not a consumer relationship to something like that? Maybe a park, if you're lucky enough, a library, if it's not too underfunded, those are also social organizations right? Communal organizations, those are good. Those are under threat constantly, right? There's been a big push to get rid of those things. Um, the, the social space has been commodified and it has enclosed upon itself and it has become, you know, a, a consumerist relationship versus, you know, public space, public socializing space. All of these things have been under threat and only play into the general alienation uh, that, that we feel, Right. So this is this is the Peterson trick here. He speaks to an alienation and an anxiety that a lot of people have. Um, and then he puts in the most kind of conservative old world view as to why people feel this kind of alienation. It's not based upon anything than a hunch uh, that he has. Um, while, you know, the Marxist socialist tradition actually looks at actually existing society, actually existing history, and has some pretty convincing arguments as to why these feelings are so dominant uh, under the conditions that we're living in. The second bit, sorry, the, the, so that's the last argument that he makes. But the first argument that he makes in that clip is that God is the good. And without God, there is no good. Right, that's the second underset, uh, unsaid part of that uh, of that argument. This is the height of alienation. Where if you are saying that you believe that there's good in the world, well, what are you talking about? You're talking about the actual experience, good that you have experienced for, from other human beings, something that we have created for our own betterment. Right, the care of a neighbor, the care of a coworker, the love of a mother. Right, that is created by human beings. It's actually something real, tangible that we know. And what the abstraction that Peterson does is he takes something away from us, something that we're doing, and he makes it seem as if it's coming from outside of material reality, outside of social reality, outside of human um, you know, construction. And that's a really, really sinister, cynical argument. We're not getting into the metaphysics of, of God or anything here. The argument that he's making alienates us from our own self and from the goodness that we create for ourselves and for others. That's really demobilizing. We first played that clip of Peterson crying because some rich guy told some people not to have kids. <laughs> um, you want to talk about something that's demoralizing, take away all the good that we do for one another and say, unless it is attached to a personal belief in this kind of higher power that Peterson is laying out for you, it's not real. It's non-existent. 
right? It, it's, it's, its existence is predicated on believing a thesis that he's putting forward. That is an extremely alienating thing uh, to believe because you're alienating yourself from yourself. You're alienating yourself from other human beings and you're replacing that with a kind of mental construction for what that human force is. Again, um, <laughs> the arguments he makes are very sloppy, but the weight with what she makes them and the things that he points to, you know, do exist sort of intuitively for people. And I'm sorry, this is a this is a failure um, on our part to not be out there and being able to counter uh, these these points. And a lot of the reason for that is that you know the left is pushed down. We don't have we're not getting invited to the Hoover Institute. Um, you know, maybe somebody like Cornel West, uh, they'll give him some time, you know, every once in a while, but he's sort of treated as a weird eccentric. Uh, while, you know, Peterson gets baited breath as he's just sort of rattles off old, old school C.S. Lewis um, kind of aphorism, aphorisms um, about, you know, Christianity and, and God and, and the family. Um, but know that, like, we need to get a hell of a lot better at, at, at speaking to the very real alienation that people have and if i'm to make any like criticism in general of of where we're at like you know there's a kind of ironic detachment that a lot of people on the left fall into and i understand why and i'm not trying to criticize anyone's like personality um but it is extremely dominant uh you know a kind of nihilism and a pessimism and we have to remind ourselves that you know the criticism the criticism that comes with you know a marxist or a socialist critique of society um, is not for the criticism to be the end all be all, but it's supposed to sp start laying out a roadmap for a better world, despite all of the shit uh, that we're experiencing. That's powerful and that's optimistic and that's hopeful. And uh, we should be leaning into that optimism a little bit more.